Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. April 10th, John Harper. Growing up in a Christian household, Harper came to faith when he was 14, and by the time he turned 18, he couldn't be kept quiet. He had to preach about Jesus. He served churches in Glasgow and in London before he went to Chicago in 1911 and then back to London where he pastored. He had been invited to return to Moody Church, so on this date in 1912, Harper, with his daughter and his niece, boarded the luxury liner RMS Titanic. The forces of nature were too much for the Titanic, but the force of John's love for lost souls was greater. This man used every minute every opportunity. Here's how it went down. Crisis makes telling the truth in love urgent. Illuminated from stem to stern, the great Titanic struck an iceberg, sending shards of ice over her starboard deck. As water flooded into her side, a horde of panicking people filled the multiple boat decks. Stars flickered above like festive lights, and strains of Alexander's ragtime band rose from a sinking deck. Urgency and panic filled the air. John Harper's voice rang from the din, let the women, the children, and the unsaved into the lifeboats. John, the great revival preacher, responded from the same fervor that guided his everyday life, the passion to see people saved for eternity. Crisis makes telling the truth in love urgent. John lowered his six-year-old daughter into a lifeboat. Then he rushed about asking man after man if he was saved. One rebuffed him. John took off his life vest and gave it to someone. He said, you need this more than I do. John knew his future. Fearless, he fought for the future of those who didn't know the Lord. The men on that deck formed a circle and knelt. Some say it was John who asked the band to play, Near My God to Thee. The Titanic settled, the bow and bridge completely underwater. A wave crashed over the deck and washed it clear. Gasping for breath in the icy waters, John grabbed a piece of wreckage. Using it to keep his torso above the frigid grave, he kicked against the freezing sea. Are you saved? He called to the nearest soul. On to the next, and the next he went. Are you saved? The great Titanic swung upward, the stern shooting out of the water. Her lights went black flickered on again for a single flash, and then went dark forever. There was a terrible crashing. When it ended, the Titanic hung vertical. It seemed an eternity she stood on end, mammoth propeller dangling from the stern, out of place in the night air. Then she slid slowly forward as her haunches slipped, slanting down, sinking, and then she was gone. Nothing remained to prove she had been there except the crushing chorus of a thousand or more voices moaning, crying, begging to be rescued from that icy death. They bobbed in the water in life belts, clinging to the wreckage, scattered in the dark, frigid waters. Are you saved? John called to the nearest man. No, said the man. I cannot honestly say that I am. Then John said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. Of the 1,528 people that went into the water that night, six were rescued by the lifeboats. One of them was the young Scotsman, Mr. Webb. A few years later, he shared his story. John Harper went down, Webb said, and there, alone in the night, and with two miles of water under me, I believed. I am John Harper's last convert. Crisis makes telling the truth in love urgent. When crisis exposes life and death, love chooses sacrifice. Be courageous. Thank you for listening to today's story. 
Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. For today's story, we have a free one-page group discussion sheet available on our website. Please join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.